Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you so much since I posted my Liberation First Look video Thursday. I've just had overwhelmingly positive response. I'm really excited that you all are so, um, that you're all so excited about seeing it, uh, especially because the video was such a brief over overview. There's so much more that I have to share with you. And yeah, I'm hoping to make a few more videos in the coming days. But yeah, the beta test program is going to be announced on Tuesday. That's May the 9th. If you want to be part of that, sign up to the mailing list, liberationlaser.com. It's just a few days away. I've got so much to do. <laughs> I just wanted to do this quick update to answer one particular question that I get a lot, which is uh, which laser controllers or DACs will Liberation work with? From the outset, it will work with the network controller, the EtherDream, uh, the USB controller, the Helios, and uh, it currently also works with laser cubes USB protocol and you can get some DACs, wicked lasers, laser docks as well. I'm not sure they still make those though. So the, unless you're using a, a laser cube itself, you're probably going to want one of these two. The USB Helios DAC is your cheapest option. I think it's about 100 euros. It's made by a very nice chap in Norway, I believe. And I'll leave a link in the comments or on screen now if you want to get one of those. But probably my recommended DAC is the EtherDream. It's the one I've been using since the very beginning. I've rewritten the driver code multiple times. It's really solid now. Um, and this is what I generally use. It's, so it's, yeah, like I say, it's network controlled. It uses its own protocol, but it is documented. So it's kind of publicly available. It's not closed at all. The other thing I get asked a lot is if there's a controller that can be put inside a laser. And actually, again, it's the EtherDream. So at the moment, if you want to get hold of one of these, I believe the best place is X Laser in the US. They currently have, this is an EtherDream version three, uh, but they have the EtherDream version four. Currently it's board only uh, because they're redesigning the enclosure for it. But if you want a controller inside your laser, this is the one. You can see there that it has two sockets on board there. That one is for RGB and that one is for X and Y scanners. The other thing you want to do if you install this inside of your laser is add a voltage regulator on there. It sounds hard, but it's, it's not crazy hard. And then that way you can use the laser's 12 volt power supply to power this directly. And then finally, you need to get an RJ45 Ethercon socket on the outside of your laser and just I just use a little patch lead to get into this. So trust me, I've got 40 lasers with these in. It works great if you want a controller that's inside your laser. If you're in the UK and you don't want to do that kind of thing yourself, then my friend Rob at Stanwax, I mean, he's been putting these in so many lasers lately, including all of Reach Lasers stock. I think there's about 20 of those. Uh, and he did my 30 large lasers as well. So yeah, if you're in the UK, you can get Rob to do it. If you're at all electronically competent, you can do it. Or I'm sure you can find someone to do it. It's not difficult. I've got some potentially very exciting news about DAX that I will share with you hopefully next week when I announce the beta program or shortly thereafter. But there's a few developments regarding DAX um, to be continued. <laughs> but I thought just for those of you who are just beginning with lasers, I could maybe explain a little bit about what these controllers are for and why you need one. Generally speaking, lasers are analog devices. So they have separate voltages for like red, green, and blue, and also their X and Y scanners. So where they are horizontally, where they are vertically. And just in case you don't know, the red, green, and blue lasers in an RGB laser are all combined into a single beam optically using, you know, dichroic mirrors and lenses and all kinds of stuff. And so you can adjust the red, green, and blue levels to create any color that you want. There's a standard format for these analog signals. It's on the back of most lasers. 
You've probably seen them before. It's this 25 pin D-type connector. And that is the standard ILDA connector. ILDA is the International Laser Display Association. They're an international trade body for laserists. The first thing that they did when they formed, it must have been over 30 years ago, uh, was create a standard for these analog signals. And that's where we get the ILDA connector. But obviously we're controlling these lasers through computers, so we need a controller to convert a digital signal into an analog signal. And that's why they're commonly also known as DACs for digital to analog converter. And you'll see that all of the DACs that I've talked about have got ILDA outputs on. So USB data converted into ILDA with a Helios, network data converted into ILDA with an EtherDream. So yeah, I hope that answers your questions about controllers. Like I said, there is some extra news that I'll be sharing next week to make sure you're up to date with everything. Join the mailing list at liberationlaser.com. Beta test program will be announced on Tuesday, next Tuesday, May the 9th. Got so much to do until then, <laughs> but I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.